The next topic I want to talk about today is, is something called mitochondrial dysfunction. Now, mitochondria are little organs in biology. They're called organelles. That just means little organ within a cell. So a cell, in order to live, has to have energy. And a cell is very active. And, you know, you could take a cell off the skin or off the liver or out of the brain, and you could put it in a Petri dish and it would grow. It's a living organism all by itself. And it has reaction rates of about 2,000 times per second. So if it's a hair cell and it's growing hair, or if it's a liver cell and it's detoxifying or making protein, it's very active and it needs energy. Now, the things that give it energy are oxygen, that's why we breathe, and some kind of fuel. So that could be a carbohydrate or a protein or a fat. And when those enter the cell, and the oxygen enters the cell, it goes to a specific area, which is called mitochondria. And these are little organs that take in the oxygen, they take in the fuel, and they turn it into energy, which we call ATP. And a healthy cell, with every go around, or a healthy mitochondria, will produce about 38 ATPs. And then the cell has energy so that it can do its work. Now, if this mitochondria can become toxic, so if you're in an environment where you're around a lot of chemicals or heavy metals or you get infections, the parasites or bacteria or viruses can produce toxins that damage the mitochondria or at least cripple it from being able to make energy. And if it can't make energy, then that cell's not going to make energy. And if a whole lot of the cells don't make energy, then you're not going to feel good. You're going to have pain because without energy, the cell has to start to make energy in a different way without the mitochondria. And it produces acid. It produces lactic acid. If the cell is making energy with the mitochondria the way it's supposed to, then there's no acid produced. It produces carbon dioxide, which we then breathe off. An average cell has about 2,000 mitochondria. Uh, the heart has way more. And interestingly enough, the ovary has the most. So an ovarian oocyte, which is the cell that will become fertilized to become the next person, has over 100,000 mitochondria per cell. So average cell has about 2,000, heart cell has about 10,000, and oocyte, ovary cell, has about 100,000. Because the energy that's required to, say, grow from a cell to a live human being takes a tremendous amount of energy. And so that's why that's there. So mitochondrial restoration is an important part of what we do because if you have damaged mitochondria, say in the brain, or mitochondria that aren't functioning, you're gonna have brain fog, or you're gonna have headaches, or you might be depressed, or maybe you can't sleep, or maybe you're not coordinated. And so it reflects on the cell that it can't have energy. One of the biggest things about energy and mitochondria is that it's all dependent on thyroid hormone. So if a person has low thyroid hormone, they're not going to have enough mitochondria in their cells. And so if you took a biopsy of someone who's got a low thyroid state, they might only have 500 mitochondria per cell instead of 2,000. And 500 can't make as much energy as 2,000. That's why the person is cold, their skin is dry, they might be constipated, they're fatigued, they can't think straight, there just isn't enough energy being generated. So if we then replace thyroid or get the thyroid functioning again so it's up, they will regrow more mitochondria from 500 to 2000, then their body starts to work better and they feel better. So this is just one of the things. There are other nutritional interventions that we can do to get the mitochondria functioning. And just to mention here, one of the biggest ones is ozone therapy because ozone does a reset on the mitochondria itself and makes it function better and faster and more efficiently. And that's why ozone helps people, or one of the reasons why ozone helps people, because it gives them energy, because these mitochondria function better. So one more thing about mitochondria that I just want to mention. Mitochondria, early, early, early on in evolution, were actually bacteria. And when cells were growing and they needed more energy, rather than develop a whole new organ themselves or organelle themselves, is they took in bacteria 
and bacteria started to replace the produce a function where they would make the energy for the cell. Now this is really important because when you take antibiotics, they can kill or impair the mitochondria in your cell. So if you're on antibiotics and you're tired or you feel exhausted or you just can't get your energy back, it may be that the antibiotic itself not only killed whatever you were supposed to be treating, but killed off some of your mitochondria, and that's why you don't feel any energy. And it may take weeks or months for this to be restored once you've gone off the antibiotic. So these little things are the, really the key to health. And when mitochondria are functioning well, then people are going to be healthy and they're going to have energy and they're not going to have pain. So our, our, one of my very definite things when I'm interviewing someone and designing a program for them is getting their mitochondria to function again. And if I can do that, then they can get well.